Suppose that you lost your 10 millimeter socket and you would like to make a new one. We're going to do this in Autodesk. We want to select metric and millimeters. We're going to use these specifications that we found online. First of all, we're going to start with a two dimensional sketch and we'll make a circle. I'll put this on the uh, XZ plane. And of course, the circle needs to be, uh, in this case, bigger than 10 millimeters. Uh, we're going to say 15 millimeters for the diameter. And then we're going to extrude that uh, 25 millimeters. Hit the home button to see the top of it. Let's go ahead and start a sketch on this plane here. We need a polygon that's located under the rectangle tool. And we're going to make a six sided figure down here. We need to make this a little bit bigger than uh, 10 millimeters to allow it to slip over the top of a bolt or nut that is 10 millimeters in size. So we need this 0.4 millimeter allowance that we're going to put in there. And so we use our dimension tool to measure the size of that. We're going to put 10.4. It looks like it's still um, underdefined. So what we can do is take this one right here. Okay, we don't need to take the size of that. We want to maybe constrain that one to be horizontal. Now, let's see. It's... Um, Sometimes we get this one over here. I think we actually hit this one right here. No, hit Control-Z. Let's try this one and click there. And it makes it fully defined now. All right, so we're good on that. And now we want to uh, cut. So we're going to use this option for the extrude tool to cut in. And the depth we want to make this cut is going to be 10 millimeters. All right, there we go. All right, what else do we have here? We have the drive socket depth, so that's the other side of this. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and um, the middle mouse key and roll over on the bottom, orbit down to there. This is my new drawing surface, and this time I really do need a square. Uh, let's pick the center rectangle right there so that we can start in the center and then come out to this distance. Now, the size of this right here needs to be a little bit bigger than 3 8 That's the size of the, the square um, end of the wrench that I have. So we're going to go with the dimensions on this side right here. Doing the math, we get 9.925 millimeters. And we can make um, these equal to each other to make sure that it becomes a square. You can see we have a little bit of... Um, well, we have a very narrow uh, distance here, so that will not be very strong. Let's go ahead and punch it out here, extrude, cut, and we're gonna, how deep are we going to go on this one here? The drive socket depth, 10 millimeters. Okay, there it is. And so it's really thin on that side, and that's really why uh, most manufacturers will make this end a little bit bigger. So let's do the same thing. Let's again use this as our drawing surface. And now we're going to make two circles. One of them is going to be the same diameter as the outside here. So we're going to lock into that, hopefully. Yeah, we're still fully defined. And now we're going to do this one out here. The reason we made two is that we don't want to extrude this area because we just cut a hole there. We only want to extrude that part. And let's see, how much are we going to do for strength here? 18 millimeters. So to strengthen up this end of it. I'm going to say 18. And you notice that one right there uh, actually changed its size. So let's put this one back where it was. And what we say, that was going to be 15, right? Okay. So I guess that didn't lock in like I expected it. Let's go ahead and extrude this maybe half the length of the, um, the socket. And so that's going to be 12.5 like that. And so it's looking pretty good. We do want to maybe put some curves on there. It will help with the strength as well. So let's put a fillet right in this junction right there. Let's go over a 3D model, fill it. And how about a three millimeter? Let's see how that's going to look right there. Okay, holding down shift key, orbiting around. Looks pretty good. Maybe we can put one right here too. And uh, that's probably good enough for that area. So in the middle, we'll use a three millimeter um, fillet, but maybe for these ends, what we can do is just use a one millimeter fillet. So let's type in one right there and just smooth out that curve. And then these right here as well. 
This will allow the socket uh, to slip over the nut or the bolt um, a little bit easier. I'm going to hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button, orbit around and do this side as well. Could also use a chamfer. It just looked like it's uh, more like a fillet when I looked at this diagram here, especially that edge here. Looks like I forgot to put a, a through hole all the way through. So let's see where that's at. Six millimeters. So we'll do that next. Let's save that. Make sure everything's looking good. Looks fantastic. Let's draw down here this time. And we will just punch a small hole through there. A through hole. Six millimeter. And we'll be able to see all the way through there. It look, didn't look like it hit the middle exactly. So I hit escape. If I make a mistake, I can hit control Z. And I wonder if I can just type in six millimeters at this point. Nope. You gotta do it before you release it. Okay, so we need to make this one right here, six millimeters. And let's do a uh, an extrude cut. And I think it's just gonna default to the distance that we need. And we can see it all the way through it now. All right, let's do a couple other things. Let's go ahead and put the uh, lettering on the outside. In order to do that, we need to make a plane above this circle or above this cylinder rather and project it onto the face. So let's see, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, one of the, the approaches we could use is to make a plane that is offset from another plane like this one down here. Um, or I wonder if we can uh, actually go off of another plane like this. Let's see if we pick the uh, the XZ plane, we can make an offset from there. So I just pulled it out. Looks like I accidentally pulled it at exactly 15 millimeters. That seems unlikely. Probably snapped into that position. So that looks pretty good. And we want to put some words on here that we will wrap around the surface. Well, not a word. We actually want to put 10 millimeters there. So let's begin to make our sketch. And we're going to put that right down here. Now, uh, let's see, once I click there, it's going to let me type in 10 millimeters. And let's see what the default size looks like. Doesn't look too bad, although um, it looks like it drew it oh, down on the wrong surface. So when that happens, you just hit Control Z. And you want to select the right surface, which is this one right here. So let me just exit out of that. Cancel that sketch. We want to make sure that we're sketching here. All right. And now we go back over to sketch right here. And let's see if this time I can put 10 millimeters on this working plane that's hovering above the other ones. Now, in order to rotate the text, we just look on the sketch tab, click on rotate, and just select the object we're going to rotate first of all, which is going to be this one. And then we're also going to select the center of rotation. I'm just going to put it down here. And you can see that you can do a free rotation, or you can just come up here. And let's see if minus 90 would do it. OK, trying that again. First thing we would do is select the object, then the point of rotation. And I'm just going to let it snap into that position there and say done. Then what we can do is probably move it over a little bit like this. So it's going to be laying down on top of the surface. The next thing we want to do is to create an emboss. So we're going to go up here, see the word emboss right there. And of course, we need to, first of all, select the object we want to emboss right there. And then what we want to do here, I clicked on shift and um, the scroll wheel to orbit we want to select the surface on which we want to wrap. So we want to put this wrap right here, select that surface. And we're going to see what it looks like. You see that it, what it did is actually put it on the wrong side and actually backwards, but that's okay. When that happens, you simply go over here and you say, edit the feature. And let's put it on this side instead. And you'll see the letters are actually coming out. We want them to be um, going into it. So let's edit it one more time. And let's see, we're going to cut it into the surface. So it's going to be this second one right here. Let's see if that's going to work. Looks really good. 
All right, and if we want to do the same thing on the other side, what we can do is hide this plane right here and go around on the other side. So the way to hide a plane, the working plane number one, just right click and uncheck visibility. And then we can come around on this side um, like this. Let's see if I can get around to that place there. The other thing you can do for this um, plane offset is you don't necessarily have to select uh, the plane that's right here in the middle. You could select that one there. Let me pull up from here. And that looks to be pretty good. And then we're going to say put our name on there or something like that. Let's make sure we're drawing on that surface. I like to orbit over here so I can highlight it, select it in green, then come back over to sketch. And I'm going to put the course title in there instead. So EMVR 2310. And we put that onto the surface. This time it did it the right way. Um, I think we should be allowed to move it now that we get out of the tool. Oh yeah, hit escape to get out of the tool. And then it's gonna let us rotate it or uh, move it over here rather. So again, if we need to rotate it, we're gonna use that tool, but what we're gonna do instead is we're going to engrave this onto the surface. Let's see if it remembered our last settings. Doesn't look like it. But this, is, this one's going to be the cut. You can see it says engrave from face. Select the profile of what you want to engrave onto the surface. We're going to wrap it onto the surface back here. Let's see if they give us a preview of it. So I'm going to orbit over here. And you can see that uh, there's our 10 millimeter. I'm not really seeing a preview of it. Let's just look at this. We're doing only one millimeter deep. And it looks like it projected onto the wrong side again. But we know what to do, right? Just edit and then um, put it on the other side like this. And there we go. Again, we can right click on the plane and um, make that invisible. And how about we give it some texture or some color? Uh, of course, what we can do at this point is 3D print it. I wonder if we can just simply go up here and say file and then save as. And the file type you want to use for 3D printing generally is STL. So I don't see it right there. Maybe it's going to be under export instead. So there's export. And let's see if we got an STL file. That's the standard thing you want to use uh, for 3D printing. I don't see that right here. So I'll come back and do that in another video to figure out where the STL file is. Let's give it some texture. We're going to go over here to, uh, I think it's manage. Uh, that can give it some style, but really want to put like a material associated with this. How about we just make it out of um, steel? So let's find one of these over here. You can see that you can select some of these. I'm just going to put stainless right there. And we're going to click this up arrow right there to apply that material to this part. Then you click close right here. And we can remove these lines right here to make it somewhat... Uh, more realistic. And I think on that one, is that where we go to manage styles? No, I think it's going to be under view and we're going to go to visual style and we're going to make it a smooth edge instead like this. And there we go. We have our 10 millimeter socket that we can now 3D print. Okay, so back to 3D printing, we can go file. Instead of export, it looks like we're going to use print down here. So you could print a PDF file, for example, but this right here says you can send it to the 3D printing service. We're not really going to do that. We're going to save it as an STL file. Let's see if it'll let us do that. Yeah, it looks like we could save it on the desktop, for example. I should have probably given it a better name than just part three. So let's go ahead and give it the 10 millimeter socket name. Now this is going to be the name for the STL file. And let's see, save that. And then also what we want to do is save it as uh, the, um, the inventor part file, IPT file. We'll do that also on the desktop, maybe in this uh, chapter two directory. So new folder chapter two would be good. And so we'll save that for later. 
inventor part IPT right there. All right, so now that we have that STL file, we have this saved in case we want to change anything. We can load up our 3D printer software. So let's see what I got over here. How about using a bamboo printer? So this one right here is a P1S. And you can see a video uh, feed of that right there. So let's pull in that part. So we're going to say plus right here to add that part from our desktop right there to our plate. And we need to change the tip over here to P1S. And you can see that the part is not really setting up straight like it should. So what you can do in that case, you can use the auto feature and sometimes do it, did a great job there. Or you can say, uh, select the flat surface here and I'm gonna select that one. So it did the same thing in that process. And you can orbit it around here. I think we're just using our left mouse button for this. That's going to be great. I'll see how long this is going to take to print at the standard 0.2 um, millimeter um, resolution. I'm going to be just going to use the default setting. Let's slice this up and it looks like it's going to take it 11 minutes and 25 seconds to print and it will cost eight cents. So that is a really good deal there. All right, so let's go ahead and get that process started there. Uh, what about some other software that you can use? Uh, in the maker space, we have some Ultimakers that you can use. I think I will want you to use those um, as well as the bamboo printers. So I think we're gonna first start off with this one though. So this one is set up for a, a Neptune. Let's see if we can uh, create a new printer. The one that we're gonna do inside of the classroom non-network printer. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an elegant. Let's see. I wonder if we can actually set up a printer in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've connected remotely to the computers in the makerspace. This application is called Cura, C-U-R-A. You'll be able to find that under the start menu on the computer in Microspace One. Uh, this is specifically branded for the Ultimaker printer. We're going to select the Ultimaker 2 Plus. Uh, we can also do these threes later on, but first one we're going to do is 2 Plus. And all you got to do here is open up the file, which was a 10 millimeter socket file. Looks like I'm going to have that on the desktop most likely. There it is. All right, let's make sure it's laying flat. doesn't look like it. Let's see if we get the same kind of tools over here. We want to rotate this. And here, if you click right there, it'll say select the face that you want to lay flat. So I want that face right there. That looks great. Let's slice it up. Just using the default settings of 20% infill. Although this is probably too high of a resolution. It does say that it's only going to take 39 minutes, so maybe that's not a big deal. Uh, and then what you'll, what you'll do is you'll put an SD drive in the computer, and then you'll be able to save this to the SD, SD, I'm sorry, the SD drive, then walk it over to the printer and print it from there. I'll make a separate video to help you out with that. Let's see how the printing's going on this one. Looks like it's the process has started. I didn't even check to see what color we're using. All right, and I'll bring this to class to let you see what it looks like. But I uh, hope this video helped. And let's see if there's anything else we need to do here in Inventor. I guess the main thing is, yeah, save it uh, to your desktop in the appropriate folder, and then, of course, upload it into D2L. Looks like those lines came back, but just remember, you can go over here to View, View Style, and then put it back on Just Shade. All right, see you in the next video.